All right, hello everybody. It's uh, it's it's me, Venomous, and Themis, and Themis. We're uh, we're doing some uh, long distance uh, Europa Universalis four playing now. Oh yeah. So he's the expert at this. I have no fucking idea what's going on. So uh, I'll let him do most of the talking, and I'll throw in some witty and insightful commentary every once in a while, and that'll be that. Okay. So what kind of what kind of what kind of you want to play as Poland? I want to fucking obliterate France. Okay. Uh. I know that might it's... not be the most appropriate thing to say now, especially with what's <laughs> going on in the world. But so, so are you saying you want to start as uh, start as the uh. The Ottomans <laughs> march your way over there. Well, let's do it. Let's let's let's. Or should we do something completely against history and play as Great Britain, or England, or whatever it was called in 1444 A.D. and just fucking conquer France? Cause why not? Sure. Let's do that. That's good. So I can be. Do you want to both play the same country? Yeah, sure. Let's work together. Cause I honestly don't know what I'm doing in this game. Okay. So just uh, click a. Click on England there and uh, ready on up. I'm clicking. I'm clicking and it won't let me click. Can I not play as the same country? Let me see what I've got the multiplayer options. Oh, there we go. Because I clicked on France and it would let me. You then... are allowed now. I'm clicking. I'm still clicking. There we go. Now we're good. So now we're both England. Yeah. Okay, so now you're ready up. Let me just hit ready and I'm good to go. Okay. So, you know what, let's turn this into more, it, it'll be a you know, comedic sort of series, but at the same time, let's make it somewhat informative, and maybe you can, you know, kind of teach me how the game works, and in yeah. fact teach the, the people who are watching, because, I mean, I, 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 tr I played this game before, I think I've had, what, I have 73 minutes logged on this game, but I have no idea what was going on, because that one time that we played, I was just clicking things, and praying Wait. that something worked. Played as Sweden and then declared war and then <laughs> just got <laughs> obliterated. I got wrecked pretty fast by Denmark, so uh. Oh man, I came in though. I came in and saved you. Yes, you did. All players have arrived. Uh. Oh, okay. All right. What are victory cards? Um, it's basically just a score mechanism in the game for you know, if if you look in the top right hand corner next to the little shield. Yep. There's a screen. Zero. Yes. That's that's basically score. So, okay. Um, it's, it's a, if you own victory cards, every certain number of years there's a pulse. Okay. Which is basically the way this game works is, it's a whole bunch of probabilities, and the way the engine goes through is it sorts through arrays according to probabilities, and then it's at a time pulse, like every hundred years or so, it'll go through these probabilities and check what has to happen, right. and that's basically the way this game. Like that's that's how like the randomization and the AI of this game kind of works. Okay. Uh, depending on the depending on what it, like the AI has shorter time scales things like that. Okay. So now that we started a new game, what's kind of like the the thing that we should I should focus on like a new player uh, to do? Like what's okay, my objective right now? So our objective is you basically look at the top left hand corner and we see all these little green and red things. Yep. Red things really bad. You don't want to have any of those red red uh, well, banners there. Have... Help it. We have a looming disaster, and we have too few rivals. I, I don't know why that'd be a problem, but okay. Okay, so the looming disaster, basically, if you click on that little orange banner, it takes you to your stability expansion tab, Yeah. Um, which you can get to as well by clicking uh, F1, and then I think it's... Scrolling through the number of keys, yeah. I think it's uh, F18. Yep. And if you look where under disasters it's highlighted this War of the Roses. Yes. And if you go over it at the very, uh, I think, yeah, it tells you basically the following effects are you have goods produced, which isn't very bad, and then available mercenaries means you can hire more units. Right. But the really bad thing is, with I mean, with War of the Roses is something that doesn't tell you in this tooltip, but basically your entire country erupts into civil war. Which, oh, that's you know, lovely. Happened during the War of the Roses, and you get to choose what side you support, and have to try and beat down the rebels and get to the right stability and all kinds of fun things like that. Okay. All so right, so that's we something want... we want to eventually take care of, I yes. imagine. So what we want to try and do is, if you go, if you keep hovering over that, and you look at the very bottom, it says why it's progressing at the rate it does before. So 
so what can we do to, uh, I mean, we have a pretty shitty leader. We have Henry the Sixth Lancaster. Hey, don't you talk shit hero. about Henry the Sixth. He was, he was my favorite Henry. <laughs> I'm more of a Henry the Eighth guy. I'm but, more uh, of a Henry the 69th guy. <laughs> oh, I'm just yeah. kidding, that was terrible. I am not 15, I swear. <laughs> so, the only things we can really do is, right now, let's take care of having too few rivals. So if you go click on that banner, we get to uh, F12 is the same shortcut, it's a diplomacy screen. Right. This is pretty much the most important screen in the game because this is where you do most of your declaring war, sue for peace, um, making allies, breaking alliances. They're really so, fucking shit up. This is, this is where you can fuck it all up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go, so we click on that, and you see in the in the I guess the bottom left hand tab there's yeah. enemies and rivals yeah Let's so you want... we have Denmark and Sweden and France and Burgundy yeah and pretty much we want Castile on our side probably Aragon on our side and uh, fuck Burgundy Denmark and France so we're gonna set them to rivals that's spirit so I mean some of them I mean the Danes happiest people on earth but you know fuck them right now well, you know what? We got rid of that little red banner, and we no longer have too few rivals. So that's yep. a step in the right direction. Yep. Yeah, as you see, we we can we could click on those um, little shields to set our rivals. Yeah. And that's how that was done. Okay. So now we have. You'll notice we have now these green banners that we can take care of. Yeah. Um, so we have a free advisor slot. If we take a look at our income, so that's F13. Or you can just move over to the money bag tab. That's the economy. Gotcha. I'm there. You can see that green button. Yep. Or the, sorry, the green text that says we're making six monies ducats. Wow. Whole, six whole monies. Six whole monies. Six whole monies. A month. Wow. That's that's like a pipe dream right now. That's Yeah. I wish so you could make go, that much. If you go back to tab number one or the government tab, you'll see there's these empty slots for advisors. Yeah. Three slots here. So what these advisors do is each of them, if you click on a certain slot, like, let's click on the top one, that's the uh, administrative advisors. Right. So you see there are three different guys available. The top two, you see, cost much more per month. There are four. And the bottom guy only costs one. It's because he's a level one advisor, and the other two are level two advisors. Yeah. The only difference is that he provides less... Uh, bonus administrative skill per month okay but the uh, other benefit he provides such as you can see national unrest minus two that's add be the same if he was level three or level two or level one right and those are the, those are the three levels the highest is level three so that's three extra admin points a month but so, those usually cost way too much so now that we we, we have to deal with an eventual civil war Mm -hmm. Nat naturally, my intuition says, wow, nat national unrest at minus two um, is something that is worth taking. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good thing, especially because we're well within our income now to hire him. Exactly. And it's not, a, he's, he's half as cheap, uh, or is he more, he's more cheap than the, uh, a quarter as cheap as the other guys. And so, you know, me and my limited knowledge of the game, that's kind of like my intuition as to yep. what to do. Yep. And you can hear my dog in the background, I'm guessing. Oh, hey, Fuzzy. <laughs> um, so let's see. We have... So we have two more two more we can fill up. We have the uh, dipl diplomacy and the military. Because we still have room in our budget, let's go down to the dip diplomatic tab. Um, diplomatic we tab. see there's, again, two level two advisors, one level one advisor. The um, dip diplomatic reputation is very important in this game. It allows you to finagle alliances much better, to uh, convince people to declare wars on your sides a lot easier. On your side a lot easier. It's something you probably want to have in the early game for sure, especially if you want to make alliances against you know that blue blob to our south. Well, that blue blob we're gonna destroy, but we can we can you know trick him into an alliance and then take him out. So I don't know, maybe that's a strategy. We probably want to ally with Castile, and then the current Holy Roman Empire, or Holy Roman Emperor, which is Austria, who's probably going to stay the Emperor for a good long time. Okay, let's do that then. So, we should hire John? Yep. 
Alright, let me recruit this guy. Alright. Oh, what did I do? I pressed the wrong button. I retired him. Ah, uh, I pressed the wrong button. Okay, that's that's no big deal. Who came in this place? I guess no one. Yeah. Man, so, I done goofed. Ah, uh, we can we can wait till that. So what that does is that's the mechanic they introduce if you wanted to. I guess wait a month and we'll have a new guy. Mm, okay. What that mechanic does is you pay the same cost it would to hire him, but you remove him from the pool so that next month a new person with different skills will come up. Okay. So, you and, know what, I fucked up, sure, but at the same time, we're learning a little bit more about the game, so that's, there's real, exactly, no exactly. harm in that, so, should we uh, hire somebody, or should we wait the month for somebody else to come up? We should wait, I don't think we can afford a level 2 right now. Alright, um, could we, uh, recruit a military advisor for the yep. time being? Yep, let's, uh, Humphrey is, a uh, land force limit, minus 10%, or, er, plus 10%, so that means we can, um, recruit more troops without having to pay extra... For going over our force limit. Force limit is basically how many troops we can support based on the amount of provinces we currently own. Okay. So we should hire him. Yes. Plus he gives us uh, the military bonus. Okay. I Something we probably want to do as well. If you see in the right hand side, there's these three tabs. There's a paper, a dove, and the, uh, the cross swords. Those little tabs you can uh, ho hover over. Uh, the Parliament, Holy Roman Empire, and Papacy? No. Um, you should see in the Government tab. Oh, in the Government tab. Uh, yes. Okay, you see the one, the green, the dove check mark there? Yeah. Okay, so that means, that's a national focus, which means it's taking one point away from administrative and one point away from military and putting that into diplomacy. So it's getting more per month than it normally should. Okay. Which is very good if you want to focus in an area. Okay. We don't want to focus in diplomacy very much if you want to take on France in the early game. Okay. Uh, we want to focus more on military because some of the early ideas, uh, if we go to the, mil the technology tab, which is um, F1-5, or just, you know, move over to the two gear wheels. Gotcha. If we go and look in the military technology at the very bottom, you'll see this uh, kind of weird head with two cross swords. Yes. I guess I don't really know. I think that's a knight piece. Oh, yeah, it is a knight piece. Yeah. So that's military tactics. Yeah. Uh, so basically, that lets you fight much better than someone who doesn't have that level of tactics. Um, it. I don't exactly know. I don't remember exactly what the mechanics are for how it lets you fight better, but it basically it, it means you take much less damage. Right. And you deal proportionally more damage, so it's much better for fighting lower technology opponents. Okay. And you don't want to be behind when you're fighting for someone like France, who has a lot more manpower to draw on than a lot of other countries around them. Right. Okay. So, we'll probably, we'll go back to our Governments tab, and then we'll click on the Cross Swords and the Fist. Cross Sword and the Fist. National focus to military power. Yes, exactly. Okay. Done. Yep. So now that's set, and because there's two people playing, I could be, I could go in and change that after you, but, actually I don't know if I can, I, I can't. Okay. So, now that our national focus is set, you'll see that we're gaining military power at the rate of six per month. Yes. So that means it's going to be much faster for us to tech up, which is what we want. Okay, so now let's move on. We've, we've finished the uh, free advisor slot. Now we've got the disputed succession. So that's basically everyone everyone of our religion, so that's Catholic right now, everyone of our religion who doesn't have a suitable heir or a strong heir, uh, if you royal marry them and you have more prestige, a ruler from your dynasty will take over the throne. Okay. You won't necessarily gain their throne, but your dynasty will be on that throne. And then there's a whole bunch of really cool mechanics that come up from that that allow you to form personal unions, which basically means that you, your king controls two thrones so that the AI is basically basically your bitch kind of thing. It's like what you were when you were Sweden and okay. Denmark was your overlord. Yeah. You can do that same kind of thing. Okay. 
So then we could probably extend that and try to get us another ally, like maybe Austria. I don't know if that's possible because if we had Austria on our on our side, then we could definitely definitely we we definitely have a better chance at taking uh, on France. Yes, maybe. exactly. So uh, one thing we can try and do is so there's a few different kind of tactics for taking on France. France always guarantees the independence of Scotland. Okay. Um, if we are able to. Well, that's one thing we need to watch out for. Scotland will usually ally, uh, form an alliance with France. So if we declare fr a war on France, then we have to watch out because they're going to go siege all of our mainland Europe provinces. And then Scotland's going to come in from the north and be not very good with us. And just completely so, touch, our, touch us, you know, in an appropriate yes, exactly. manner. And that's unacceptable by my standards. Yeah. Um, should so we, one, we, I noticed that we don't have any actual military power near the north, uh, in Northumberland and uh, Cumbria. <laughs> uh, <we'd, laughs> I swear I'm not being. We don't actually have any, any troops there, so I, I, I imagine building troops there at some point will be beneficial to us? Uh, usually you want to keep all your troops in, together in one stack Okay. as much as possible. It, it makes it it's much more difficult for the... You're more likely to win battles that way. You're much less likely to get uh, overwhelmed. Okay. So the first thing we really want to kind of do is... Well, let's look at our alliances. Let's look at the, who hates France. So the way we do that is we exit everything, click on France. Uh, or on or France. alternatively, go to F1... Um, F, F1 Diplomacy. I think it's like F1-2 or F1... Yeah, I got, a, I got Diplomacy, yep. Yep, and then we click on France. Click on France. And now you'll see... Brittany, Aragon, and England. Yeah. Okay. So Brittany... Or Burgundy, yeah. We, we were already at rivals with them. We can't really do much. Um, in, uh, Aragon. I think we can probably get an alliance with... I'm not sure if we'd rather have Aragon or Castile. Usually what happens is around 1500, uh, Castile gets an option to royal to personal union Aragon, and if Aragon still has Naples under them, Aragon and Naples. Mm -hmm. So that's, it would probably be best to, right now, improve relations with both Aragon and Castile simultaneously. Okay. And then we'll wait on forming an alliance with them right away. Okay, and so how do we go about doing that for the uninitiated? For the uninitiated, so now what we're going to do is, you see we have three diplomats? Uh... Three in the top right hand side. The diplomacy tab? Uh, do you see an outline, the outliner? Mm, I'm on Castile still, so I have to go back to... Oh, it's, it's, it should be out, outside of that, it should be underneath the pause button. In the top right corner. Okay, outliner, yep. So okay, click on that. You see we, we have three diplomats at the top. Free, right? Yeah, Charles, Edgar, and Guy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to, um, we're going to improve relations with both Aust or, or with all all Austria, Aragon, and Castile. And when they both when they all get maxed out, then we're going to basically off in the alliance. Okay. So the way we improve relations is we. Go back to our diplomacy tab. Okay. Click on that country you want to improve relations with. So I have Castile up, for example. Yes, Castile. So then we go, we scroll all the way down. You see these uh, wind, these little like closed tabs, the little minus uh, plus signs. Yep. Basically, just go ahead and open them all. Um, you're going to use pretty much any all of those areas at some point or another. So what we're going to do is we're going to go scroll all the way down to where it says Relations Actions. Relations Actions. Yep. Okay, and then you see where it says Improve Relations? Yep. We're just going to click that. It's going to send a diplomat to that country to improve relations with. There okay. we go. So we're going to improve relations with Aragon, and we're going to improve relations with Austria. And I'll let you take on Aragon. Actually, uh, I'll take Austria and you do Aragon. Oh, we've already they're, taken they're care of both. Okay. Taken care of. So we we're basically gonna let them improve relations for a few months. Uh, I think it's about three per month until they get to plus fifty, and then 
two per month until they get to around a hundred, and then one per month after that. I don't I don't know exactly the timings on that. Okay. Um, but basically, it's going to be maybe two to three years. Okay. And then we'll have them topped at around a hundred. And at that point, we can move on with the rest of our plan. Exactly. Okay. So let's next, do that then. Yep. So the next thing we next thing we see is there's the next green one is um, no mission selected. So that's the scrolls with the X. If we click on that, it brings us to our missions and decisions tab. Okay. So here we see we have three three missions: improve our prestige, solidify our people relations, and reclaim Armigny. Yeah. Um, if we reclaim Armigny, we it's basically the one that's going to send us on a path to war with France the fastest. So should we do that right away? Might as well, because we probably plan on being at war with them as soon as we can get um, an alliance. Where is Armigny? I'm having a hard time finding it. Armigny is... Uh, do you see the... You can press F. Yep. And then type A-R-M-A-N-G-N-A-C. Oh, it's way down there, okay. It's yeah. a province in France, okay. Yes, exactly. Well, we probably... Looking at this, I don't think... Because Austria isn't a rival of France, it's going to be very difficult to get them into a war. It's going to take at least... Uh, we have to make we have to be their ally, their ally for 10 years, okay. and then we need to call them in on p political favors. Uh, that's a new thing with the... Uh, diplomatic or I, I don't know if that's new exclusively to the patch or to the expansion okay. um, but so it's gonna I think Aragon is the only one that we could get in right away okay so we probably want Aragon for sure and then Austria if we can swing it I think that's it's the only real uh, enemies that we can really kind of bring that will hate France automatically. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now let's go to mission selected. Uh, let's actually do... We can probably let uh, Castile sit on the back burner for now. I'm just going to bring our bring our guy home. We're going to do uh, solidify our people relations. First, um, okay. So what does that involve? Uh... So if you hover over the question mark, uh, the Papal State's opinion of England is at least 100. Okay. So the Papal State is, if you click on this Papacy button, that's in the, again, the bottom right, those three little buttons, one's Parliament, one's Holy Roman Empire, one's Papacy. Gotcha. Uh, it's like the uh, the keys thing. Yep, you got the Holy See and the Papal State is the current yep. controller. Yep, so you can basically click on the Papal State. And that's, that's the easiest way to find the Papal State on the map, because sometimes... Depending on who conquers Italy, they move around. Okay. So, what we want to do, Papal State, usually they're centered around Rome. So, if you know your geography, that's in Italy. What? I thought that was in America. I know. Wow, I'm, I'm an idiot. So, I am... Okay. Uh, we don't want an alliance from Leicester, I don't think. That's... Unless we can vassalize them. Mm, yeah, I see that now. Oh, we can vassalize them. So we may want to, we may want to deal with them a little bit later. I guess we can, we can probably take the alliance for now, so and that will make sure that. Um, let's see. Well, who do we want to pick sides with? I'm just gonna pause it again. So we have an we, alliance with Connacht or an alliance with Leinster. And we can take both of them, but. I don't think that's going to suit our needs to take both of them. Okay. We're going to want to choose probably Connaught because it can uh, touch the rest of Ireland. Uh, and yeah. we can use Connaught to, if we can ally Connaught, we can keep Munster or Leinster from growing too big mm -hmm. and keep Ulster from growing too big so okay. that we can potentially take over all of Ireland at some point. So I think Connaught is probably going to be our best bet. And as well... Well, let's take a look at which one Scotland's friendly with. To do that, we go to, we click on the country we're interested in, 
And then we go to, if you see, uh, see where the map is in the bottom left, bottom right? Uh, yes. And you see all these buttons above? Yes. One of them's a green heart. Do you see that one? Uh, green heart above the map. I don't see a green heart above the map. I have a free uh, slot for primary map mode. Okay. I, maybe it's... I can okay, select... Be, there we go. Opinion. Yeah, opinion, yeah. There we go. Found it. Also, shortcut is R, I think. Default. Okay, so, so that's just a map overlay. Yep. So now if we click on the province of, uh, country of interest, which is Scotland, we see that... Um, Scotland doesn't really have any uh, opinion modifier towards any of the other Irish, Irish nations. So it's probably not going to choose any one of them over any of the others, but it's probably going to choose whichever one we don't back. Okay. And then we can use Connaught as basically a proxy war for going to war with Scotland without dragging France in. Okay. So we can, let's, let's, let's uh, choose Connaught. Okay, I'll, our... I'll accept it now. Okay. And then should we decline the offer from Leinster? Yeah, but we'll just decline the offer from Leinster. Just decline it, right? Yeah. Okay, it's declined. Okay. You notice that our diplomat is now back from Castile. Oh, so I now did, yeah. we can click on the Papal State and then we can go to improve relations with them. And that'll help A, uh, increase the amount of Papal influence we earn every month. And so how do we uh, improve our relations with uh, with the Papal State? So we click on, we go click on the Papal State like we did for Castile or Aragon while we're in the Diplomacy tab. While we're in the Diplomacy tab, okay, so F, F1, 2. Yep. And then click on the Papal State. Where is that? So if we look in Italy above the purple Naples boot, you'll see a little kind of beigey white. That's the Papal State. Uh... I think because my map is on on oh. opinion mode, I can't quite oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. Uh, political mode is the little flag, the blue flag. There we go, political flag. And so we're looking for... where are we? There's Roma. There you go. That that province there. It's, it's not a part of the people's state. Okay, and then we'll improve relation with these guys? Exactly. Okay, I've sent my diplomat, our diplomat there. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take care of our mission. Uh, you'll see now that there is no debate in Parliament. Is the next thing we have to deal with. Because we're, and because we're starting with England, this is a unique government type only to England in the game. So the way this works is we click on the Parliament, either through this uh, flag, this banner that comes to the top, or, if you want to access this at any other point, uh, do you see where the bottom right, those three circles? Yes. The one that looks like the um, Parthenon, or... The Parthenon? 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 Yep, I got um, that open, the English Parliament. Yep. So now we go, the only clickable there, start debate. Do we start a debate? Yes. Alright. So now there should be three issues to push through. Yep. Expanding Once, the army, funding the yep. expansion of bureaucracy, and increasing taxes. So, I think the one that's going to be most beneficial to us for now... Oh, there's more if you scroll down. Oh, yeah, there is, actually. Issue letters of marquee, quartering of troops, as well. Hmm. So, land attrition is pretty good. So is... Uh, so is the taxes. I think it's going to be a toss-up between taxes and troops. Basically, quartering of troops means that we're going to pay less for the troops so we can earn more money there. Yeah. And then land attrition means that we can stack more of them on a province without suffering from, well, it's basically, you know, having a good supply chain. Okay. I think if our ultimate goal is to take over a nation, the quartering of troops is probably the debate that I'd side yeah. towards. Yeah. Okay, let's select that. Okay. Okay, so now you'll see... We have a 0% chance to win and a 0% chance to end. If we hover over both of those, we'll see why. For chance to win, because none of the four current seats we have given have 
uh, chance of winning or aren't backing us, so we won't have a chance to win. If we hover over chance to end, we see that it's going to continue until 1449, and then it has a 10% chance of ending each month. But if we lose, it costs us prestige, ah, which okay. isn't nice, isn't fun. I mean, it's not really terrible. Ha not having positive prestige isn't the worst, but usually you want to have positive prestige just because, you know, that kind of feels good. Exactly. Feels good, man. Yeah, it, it does, I guess. I don't know. I've never really controlled the nation, um, <laughs> but I can only imagine. All right, so, so now we've, we've taken care of that. We've, we've started a debate, which is one of our missions, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we're still trying to improve uh, people relations. Yeah, so I think one thing we also want to do is we want to look at, I'm trying to see which map mode, I guess development. So you can get to the development map mode by going, you see those, those four blue squares above your map? Uh, no, but I can select it. I don't have my quick selects yet. Development. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I have development yeah. now. There's four blue, like there's economic map modes, geographical, diplomatic, and political map modes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Those there, those, see, those hold every single overlay in the game. So if you just want to get to one of those quick and dirty, you don't have to hotkey it. Okay, and so we want to, I'm, we want to be in the development mode map right now. Yeah. Okay, that's where I'm at so too. What we want to look for is we want to hover over provinces we own that have, because I'm, I'm thinking we want to probably add a few more uh, seats to Parliament. Okay. So the reason why, and we can quickly get to this by, um, if we click on the London province, we exit out of all our other interfaces and click on the London province. Okay. Um, if you go to the top left of that interface, there's three circles. Okay. Yeah. One tells us it's our capital, which it only happens in London. The other tells us that it's our main trade city. This happens wherever we decide our main trade city to be, which happens to be London. Okay. And then the last one is this green circle that says London has a seat in Parliament. So basically what that means is provinces that have a Parliament seat get a bonus 10% to production efficiency, a bonus 10% to tax, so basically they make more money, so it's, it's good. And then they also have more manpower, so they replenish your armies faster, which is also great. And then it also reduces the autonomy, which we don't have any unrest or high autonomy, except for in, like, Northumbria or... I think Northumbria because it's probably assigned to... No, yeah, just Northumbria and otherwise. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to our development tab and look at the highest development provinces, because those ones are the ones that will benefit the most from having a seat in Parliament. Our development tab, oh, uh, development, development, there we go, gotcha. Okay, so we can look, you can kind of see our outline, you see where England is kind of labeled if you zoom all the way out. You can see like England and France and, you know, not all the way out, but like far enough away that all the individual province names kind of disappear. Yeah. So you kind of know where England is, and then you kind of know we have some provinces on mainland France. So now we can look, we see um, Gascon, or Gascony. Gascon, um, that is, I'm just going to F it. Uh, there we go, found it. So we see that that's got a development of 21. Yep. So it's probably something that we want to want to make into a seat of parliament. Although it's currently right now you can see controlled by the burgers. So this is this here is we have to make uh, an important distinction. Are they the cheeseburgers or the hamburgers? Because I think I think they they'd be the uh, English burgers. I don't even know what that is and actually the French burgers really. I d I did not know the French were good for burgers. Of they, course they I'm speaking of the food item and, and <laughs> Um, dum, dum, so Gascon, um, as we see, we it's currently controlled by the burgers, and because it's controlled by the burgers, it gives us a lot of a lot more trade power in this region of France. Mm -hmm. So we probably don't want to remove the control of the burgers from Gascon, 
because it means that we're much more able to divert trade away from the horrible blue bob and into our trade zone of uh, the English Channel. You can see the trade menu by, um, I think it's shortcut, if you're not in any windows, shortcut E. And that's the, the square, the two boxes above your map. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see. You see um, sort of arrows dictating how the trade works. Yeah. So what we can do, I mean, if that's not a seat that we want to remove, what about selecting like uh, Normandy or Cow as a, as okay. a potential seat in Parliament? As yeah, we, I think it's on it's on mainland France or on mainland Normandy's Europe. Normandy's probably a good one. Uh, it's got six development. It's got six. Uh, or, base sorry, production. It's got, it's got seventeen development. It's got six base tax, six base production, five manpower. So that's probably a great seat to have. It's better than Cow. Yeah, for I sure. I will agree. I will say that. And then we probably want, so now we have five seats in Parliament. We probably want, I think maybe five probably should be good for now. As you gain more provinces, uh, you need to have a certain ratio of seats. Okay. So you'll have more seats the more provinces you have, but that will come up later on. Right. So right now we want to win this, we want to more or less ensure that we're going to win this debate. So the way that we can do that is to be, if we go down in our Parliament tab, we see each of these provinces have some demands they want met before they'll back us. Again, where is the Parliament? Oh, wait down here. Right, there we yep. go. I see. Yeah, there's five seats and they want particular demands. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Kent wants use of crown lands, so basically that sacrifices five legitimacy. Um, legitimacy is kind of the currency of the nobility in this game. If your legitimacy gets too low, then people don't see you as a very fit ruler and you'll have more unrest. Um, actually, legitimacy, if you look at the very, very top, there's a crown with the number 100 next to it. Uh, yes. Okay, if you hover over legitimacy, you can see the effects from the, the current legitimacy as it is. Um, national unrest is down because we're more legitimate. Um, the tolerance of our own Catholic faith is up, and tolerance of other heathens and heretics is also up because we have high legitimacy. If our legitimacy went lower, all those numbers would go down, or I guess technically national unrest would go up because we become more positive, right. which we don't want because a positive unrest is not a good thing for anyone. No, not at all. So, but the thing is, a, a difference of five is not very much, and that'll come back, as you see again if you hover over, at 0.72 every year. So in a period of about six, seven years, it'll be back. And, the, I mean, the game lasts until 1884 or so. So, I mean, what's five years out of 400? Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that's a, a wise choice to make. So we'll probably let them use our crown lands. So now London wants to have Grant Navy Commissions. What that means is if we again go to F1 and then 780, or 780, yeah, F10, um, we see our military tab. Yeah. In the bottom left, we see these kind of just text, Army Tradition, which has got the little men next to it, and the Navy Tradition, which has got the little boat next to it. Yeah. So, Army Tradition, basically that is how good your troops are at combat, and then Navy Tradition is how good your boats are at, as well, being boats. Um, fighting and protecting trade. Uh, as we see, it's already very low, so it's not going to matter if we lose five. Right. It's not going to be detrimental. And if we go back to Parliament, we notice that there were a number of them that wanted Navy Commissions. You can't go negative on tradition, so basically once you get to zero, there's no penalty for continuing to draw on that zero for Army and Navy tradition. Okay. So we'll just grant the Navy commissions, and then those are all on our side. And then we don't need to even worry about the Oxfordshire wanting diplomatic support. Because we have a 100% chance of winning. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay. So now we've taken care of that. And now let's move on to the last 
green banner. I know I know this is a lot to we've been sitting at a pause screen for about thirty minutes, but this <laughs> game there's a lot to learn. No, I know, I know, and I and I definitely had that impression the first time I played it. So I'll tell you what, let's go and make the last decision and then we'll cut the video and then we'll uh, start another video so that folks don't are they're not overwhelmed with one large video, we'll do it in like forty five minute chunks. No, sounds good, sounds good. Okay, right, so, so last banner. National, National decisions. decisions. Okay. So we're back in our missions and decisions tab, only now we're dealing with the bottom part of this tab. Okay. So all these are decisions that come available over time, based on either technology or stability or other events that transpire. So we can see right now, because we have a theologian, which if we remember back in our government tab, was the administrative advisor that we hired. Yes we get this decision to pass the advancement of religion. What this does is we either can take it, and if we take it, we are always going to have plus one military strength for the rest of the game. Actually, this game goes until 1821, not 1880-something, sorry. Ah, cool. uh, so until the rest of the game, we have plus one missionary strength, but the downside is we have plus one national unrest forever. That's a bad downside. But if we look at the stability and expansion tab, the next one over, or eight, we can see that our national unrest at the very bottom right, the number is minus 4.8. Minus 4.8, where are we? See oh, I see right there. So we so see that we're always going to have um, minus one because of our government form, which is a, a parliamentary... Um, I guess kingdom, and that yeah, we have John Capgrave. Capgrave is one of our advisors, which is a, yep. another minus two until we decide yep. to boot him and put in another guy. And then, and then our legitimacy is also close to minus two. Yeah. So the thing that we're gonna have to worry about is if we lose John Capgrave because he won't be alive forever. No, um, he looks pretty old. Yeah. He he's only fifty one now. Or he's fifty one now. He might live to sixty. I've seen them get up to 70, but not usually. Um, he'll probably pop off pretty soon, so we will we'll likely lose that minus two. So it's probably not worth it to take the um, advancement until we unlock ideas later on down the line that give us the ability to take that missionary strength hit. Okay. So what we're going to do is, right now, we're not going to worry about it. Do you see where that little yellow dot is? Yes. That basically lets us, if we click that dot, that pop-up will never bother us again. And we can cycle through. If that dot's off, um, then we don't need to worry about it. Right. And that's that's pretty much it. Now we've dealt with all of our little pop-ups. As well, you can remove pop-ups by just right-clicking on them. Some of them you want to get rid of because you don't care that there's a speed of succession. It's just cluttering. Um, and other ones you probably want to have hang around like this looming disaster to let you kind of know where you're sitting. Yeah, I think that's that's it. And then next time we can actually play uh, play a few days. All right. So yeah, uh, thanks, Demas, for setting up the game for us. So that'll be the end of part one. Uh, tune in to part two, which should be up at the same time as part one. Because uh, I guess what the hell? Let's record it all at once. Let's uh, let's do what we're saying and let's fuck France. Just let me scroll in and out of Paris really quickly. Donna, 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 Donna. Da. All right. So. That's a wrap. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, again, it's it's me, uh, Venomous, and uh, my buddy here. It's Themis. And that's a wrap for now. Thanks for tuning in.